Amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you would. Um, uh, you got this message. I like easy messages. Amen. Amen, I do. And, and uh, any young preacher boys in the church, there's nothing, nothing new. There's nothing really explicitly deep about my preaching. But I just like it when it kind of jumps off the page at you. And you can't help but just say, boy, that is really good there. And uh, we'll take up reading in Acts chapter number 13 and verse number 14. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit, and, and uh, I'm just going to uh, just read just a, a, a little bit to get to where I need to go, and then we'll preach just for a minute. Just, I'm going to just give you the points, and we'll go. In Acts chapter 13, verse number 14, But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Poseidon, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, you men and brethren, if you have any word or exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought them out of, of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed the seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land uh, to them by lots. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. And afterwards they, des uh, they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul the son of Kish, a man of, of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will of this man's seed. Hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. And when John had first preached before the coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom do you think that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for these scriptures. Lord, help us, dear God, to recall all of these things that, Lord, you've shown me in private. Help me to bring it out, God, realizing that it is not me. It is the Word of God. Lord, the Word of God is going to tear down strongholds, and it's going to put families back together again. It's going to get the sin out of our lives. And, God, it's going to save the lost. And, Lord, I thank you for that tonight. I ask you, dear Lord, to be with us as we come to this worship hour. Thank you for this goodly church and this goodly pastor and these folks. God, Lord, I do not know the need of the hour these folks, God, but Lord, I know the sweet Holy Spirit does, and God, I ask you to touch the hearts and lives through the reading and the preaching of your word tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. You can be seated, amen. Thank you. I preach this on the, at the, when I street preach, I just don't try to get out there and beat the air like some boxers, a shadow box, and I try to preach a message that if somebody wanted to come and hear They'd get fed and maybe get a little curious as to hearing some good Bible preaching. But I'll have you to know that I was taught under the school of alliteration. And, uh, well, I'm just going to preach a little alliterated message. And, boy, you can see them start popping like popcorn after that verse 25. I mean, it just comes absolutely alive. I believe in helping young preacher boys uh, to see some things right out of the Word of God. You don't have to look for nothing hard. Uh, I don't know who's the preacher boy in here, but you don't have to look real hard and real far to find you a good uh, message right out of the Bible. You don't have to contort it. You don't have to rest it. You don't have to try to mangle it. You can see something really good right out of your Bible. I'm going to preach tonight that salvation is come. Salvation is come. Then what kind of preacher Paul was? I want you to notice, if you would, it's kind of unorthodox for us to think about doing it, but because I do this now, it seems about right for me. And the more I read about Paul and the more he went to where the people were, now, he was born again, but he still went to that synagogue to try to reach his people and try to reach his community and try to reach those. And he would sit back. Well, we don't believe in sitting back at all, do we? Yeah. Praise God. He'd sit back and allow them to preach. And you know what they did? When they would begin to preach, they would pave the road for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was kind of like giving that little fish a little bit of line and a little bit more line and a little bit more line. And right about the time that fish thinks that it's got the bait good and it's in full control, one of those uh, priests or one of those uh, temple leaders would stand up and because of custom, he'd say, Thou Paul, I see thou back there, my dear brother. Would you like to expound upon the scriptures that have been read? And Paul in everyday uh, South Carolinian, Georgian language, yeah, I will. 
I can handle that. Amen. Amen. And I want you to look at what the, the message of Paul. Man, it's just absolutely really good. Listen what he went to. He didn't go to nothing new. I can hear him now. If you'll follow, follow me along real quick with this, the way Paul preached the way of salvation. He began to beckon with his hands. He began to preach and he began to show these people how God uh, pulled out of people who were not a people. And then he pulled out a person and his name was uh, Moses. How God began to move in the life of Moses. How God spoke to Moses through the bush that burned and was not consumed. How that God led Moses through, got him out of Egypt to get him where he could do something with him to put him back up into Egypt and how Moses led a people out of captivity got them out of that captivity but it was that wilderness wonder, and I believe Paul would have touched on when he began to talk about how those uh, Hebrew children began to complain about being starving to death and God sent them bread from heaven but I don't believe he talked about that angel's food I think he talked about that true bread from heaven the Lord Jesus Christ how that when they were thirsted uh, Moses went over and the first time he smote the rock and that's a picture of Christ being smitten for our sins he smote the rock the first time and he was obedient he went back the second time and instead of speaking to the rock he smote the rock again the rock only gets smitten one time one time in all the world. And anyway, I talked about Moses and how Moses brought them through the water. And then he come into this uh, time of uh, how they come in there to Canaan. And uh, he gave them judges. And I can hear about all the great stories and the power of God and how he'd move in those judges, Samson. How he can take a man, hallelujah, how he can take a man that's so messed up in sin. And how he goes against God and how he goes against God's word. And how he can take a man and build a man back up and use a man that was unusable. Because he lied to mom and daddy. He went to the vineyard. He partook of the vineyard. He partook of the vine. And when he walked through it, he was, might as well have been drinking it. And he killed that beast over by the vineyard. And he liked that strange woman. Amen. Right. Yep. And that was the downfall. He took the promise of God. Was it, was it so much those locks? And I don't believe it was long, sissified hair. I believe it's much like the locks they grow now. Amen. He took him a couple of locks and cut them off. You think it was so much in the hair? Or you think it was in the promise of God that he took right. for granted? I believe it was that promise of God. He, he made that promise of God of none effect. He just thought it was something, something simple. He thought it was in himself, but it was the promise of God to give him that strength. Don't let a razor come upon your head. Abstain from the vine. That promise of God he went against. Boy, I can hear those Israelites, man, starting to get messed up about Isaiah over there in 53. There's going to be Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 9. All them promises about the Messiah. How they can start hearing that bell toll in their ear. How they walked on those promises. And then he comes on down in. If you'll notice I just seen this. It jumped off the page at me when I was coming through here. Can you notice how God can use a man? Have you seen, did you, I didn't even see that. How God can use a man? Amen. He's using Paul right now. I think he might be drawing a little picture of that. Look at Saul, uh, Saul there, the king Saul. He thought he could do what God, only God's chosen elect could do, the, the, the uh, uh, help me Lord, uh, the Levites. He wouldn't wait on Samuel. He said, well, I can do just as good as Samuel. I don't have to wait on Samuel to offer a strange offer. And I can just offer, I mean, offer an offer and I can just offer a strange offer. It's just, an, it's just the priesthood. It's just, it's just something God said. It really doesn't mean that much. When God took away the kingdom out of that man's hand, when he just stepped into a place that he had no business being in, then we, and he still let him be king, praise God. Listen, he comes on down and it gets into the space of David. And we all know David. And boy, it baffles my heart, but it really don't because I, I call myself Peter sometimes, but boy, I can really relate to David. I'm talking about messing up royally and God not throwing you out like he throws out dirty dishwater. I'm glad God just don't throw us out like an old rag. I'm glad God found us as an old rag and God can use us, amen, when he cleans us up. Amen. That's you right. think about every, every commandment that that man broke with Bathsheba. I mean, my heavens. And, and he still retained that title. Right. Still retained that title. Abraham had the friend of God. But David was known as a man after God. I cannot Amen. understand that, but that shows the love yeah. of God. Amen. Man, the love of God. Yeah. Well, we get on down into David's time and all those. We ain't got time to go into all those prophecies because I just want to give you these boom, 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 how Paul preached. And it lets you, let you let the pastor of the good church come in here. But then look, he begins to turn this boat around. Now, if he didn't have them scratching their head and kind of shuffling their feet, he's fixing to. Because look what he says in verse 23. Of this man's seed, he connected Christ with the king. Boy, ain't that good. 
I like that. Of this man's seed. I want you to look at that. Of this man's seed of God, according to the promise of risen to Israel, a Savior. And he just didn't leave it out there for speculation. He said, and Jesus was his name. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, when John first preached. Now, that when John first preached is near and dear to my heart because that's my sending verse. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 23. John 1, 2, 3. Ain't that easy? About like y'all's address. That's funny, ain't it? That's my sending verse to go to Montana. I am as a voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's what I feel like. Sometimes I preach to cows. Sometimes I preach to people. I preach to pigeons, to cats, to dogs. I had a man pull up one day and thought he was going to shoot me. As a farmer had his hand in his lap. I didn't know if he had a Colt 45 or uh, a cold drink of Pepsi. I just told God, I said, God, don't let it hurt. Whichever one is, 30 minutes to the doctor to get there. I said, Lord, let him kill me dead. But uh, listen, he began to preach this about Christ. And then I want you to look, and as Paul's turning, I want you to just see that boat, and you can read that later, young man, and get you a good outline. But I want to show you just these quick steps right here, and I'm not going to be long, too long. Paul preached a whosoever kind of gospel. Amen. I mean, it's right there in your Bible. I mean, boys, start popping off there. Now you start seeing that W. Amen, ain't that alliteration? You start seeing that W pop off the page and attack you real quick now. Listen to what it said. It said, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear God. I'm glad that Paul believed that whosoever would, could. I'm glad, and I don't believe there's a Calvinist bone in Paul's body. I just don't believe that. I believe Paul thought that if any man, that the Holy Spirit can convict any man, any man, woman, boy, or girl, or child, could get saved. Can I say a word right there, Brother Pastor, and I'm not going to mess it up and get us in a mess. But can I tell you about this thing about election right quick? If you get right over in your Bible, I ain't never figured this out, how those smart Calvinists missed this. You know, so, 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 I mean, boy, they're educated beyond their learning, amen? They're ignorant. It's what they are. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 18, the whole world is under con condemnation. Right. The whole world. Unless you get saved, you're under condemnation of God. Right. The whole world. And Jesus died for the whole world. Amen. Jesus Amen. died for the whole world. And I thank God he died for me. Amen. I heard that Amen. testimony this morning. He did die for me. Then look at that next one there. What did he preach? To, the, to you the word of this salvation is sent. It's a good day right. for that little synagogue. They probably didn't realize it right then because I don't know if you know, study your Bible. I just happened to study this a while back. Antioch, Poseidon, those Jews up there, absolutely this ain't Antioch over in Jerusalem. This is Antioch. They absolutely hated, absolutely, those leaders hated to see Paul come that day. They chased him through Derby, through Lystra, through every little town over there. He'd get a growing, a, a growing congregation and there'd come them Jews stirring up going to get the baser sword. Them sons of Belial, them liars, those, those ladies and everybody else that could come down on him. But I'm glad Paul said today is a good day. For the word of salvation is coming to you. Now, I'm not going to hit all these uh, time. We'll just elude us here. But Paul preached unto them the word of salvation. Then if you look down just a little bit, you're going to notice that not only was it a word, not only was it just the word of salvation. Let me read verse 27. For they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet their voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Even in condemning them, they fulfilled Bible prophecy. Right. He's talking to those Jewish leaders. Then it comes on down there, verse 29. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him from the sepulcher. I'm glad that Paul preached about stuff that was written about him. Right. Written about him. It wasn't self-help. It wasn't uh, uh, not, not, just, not just some kind of uh, fixing a life through a bunch of 12 steps. He told them how to get fixed once and for all, and it was through the name of Jesus. Amen. Preached of what was written about him, as it is written, as it is written, as it is written. The death, burial, and resurrection. Then I like this. Not only, amen, I, boy, I like this part. Not only things written about him. No, no, not only just the things written about him. But also I want you to notice this. How they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. He's preaching the gospel to these people. I don't know if you've caught that yet. It's a message inside of a message here. Uh, but verse 31, it says, And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. He preached about them witnesses over in the book of Acts. Some 500, not just one. It was saying wasn't done in a corner. Over in Psalms chapter 22 said this thing wasn't done in a corner. Everybody saw this thing. Not only did it, was the death public, but that resurrection and praise God that ascension was made public. Not just for a group of disciples that would fade off the scene someday, but this thing was made public. 
Amen. people might see and believe that you. The Jew seeketh after a sign, they still do. Right. But that Gentile, I'm glad Brother Paul, Paul just preached. Amen. 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 So those Gentiles that were in, there'd be some Gentiles in them services. And they'd, they'd, it, I, I could preach all night and let you see that. But they're the ones that really accepted it. Amen. Because God said they would by hearing it. All them Jews, they, well, now Jesus is gone. They can't see him. But they still have to get born again by hearing. It's hard, though, for them just to hear. They have to have that sign. Isn't that funny, the sign from heaven, the bread, and they miss it? Isn't that amazing? That's absolutely amazing. Well, let's go on here. Uh, let me find out where I'm at here. But, uh, yeah, amen. Now, now verse 2, verse uh, 20, let's see. I boy, I got messed up now for sure. It'll be a mess now. We're going to have sheep in the river and sheep in the pasture. Amen. You ever heard that joke? Paul preached, Paul preached the cleanliness of Christ as he is pure. Look at Acts 13, verse 34 and uh, 39. And I, I'm going to be done here in just a minute, preacher. Look, it says, as concerning that he had raised him up from the dead. Now, no more to return to corruption. He said, on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he said unto another psalm, uh, Thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Isn't it funny that he put that in your Bible? I'm going to read this a little bit more. But isn't that funny he put that in that Bible because that was a virgin tomb that he was placed in? Never yet a man laid. If a man had been laid in that tomb, there would have been some form of evil corruption in that tomb. But because it was a virgin tomb, there was no corruption. I remember, I don't know who it was I heard. I believe it was Reggie Sattler said, man, they got him down. Corruption got him down. and could not. Could not get him to corrupt. Could not get him to rot. Could not get him to rot. Amen. Death over in the corner. I believe that's that, that old story, ain't it? What's that name? That poem or whatever. Death could, death said, oh, I got this. I got everything. Don't worry about it. But corruption was lathered up uh, like a mess. And corruption could not get him to rot. And corruption went. And then the third day, death come up with a black eye. Death could not hold him bound. Amen. Amen. Well, he couldn't corrupt. Then it goes on verse uh, number 35, where for, oh, no, verse 36. For David, after he had served in his own generations by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid into his fathers and saw corruption. What he's doing is he's telling that psalm, that story of David was not talking about David, but it was talking about Jesus. But he whom God raised saw again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. But when that man Jesus could do better things, Hebrews says, Hebrew says uh, he's better than the angels, better than uh, Melchizedek. Better, he's better than the law. Where the law was weak, that it condemned. How, how many's ever read Pilgrim's Progress? Anybody ever read that? Man, I remember reading that. I got so tore up, man, when I heard about that angel as Pilgrim come climbing out of that muck and mire, and that angel come and smote him in the heart and flew off, and he, he come down with a desperate blow to his chest, and that angel come in again and smote him in the heart again and knocked him down. And Pilgrim said, "Who is that?" He said, it's the law, it shows no mercy. Man, I'm glad there's mercy and compassion. I'm glad every time we go to the feet of Jesus, there's compassion and there's mercy can be found. Amen. Uh, real quick, and I'm almost done. Uh, uh, verse 40 through 41, Paul preached the danger of rejecting Christ. Look here at verse 40 and 41. Beware. Boy, I seen that when I was reading through this. Not really so much the other stuff, the W's and all that. But boy, I saw that Beware. Boy, when that's in the Bible, buddy, you better slow down in first gear and, and, and hit the brakes a little bit and take it slow through these next little curves. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of the prophets. Behold, you despisers and wanderers, and perish. For I work a work in your day, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Man, I think about the hundreds of people. Have you ever tried to witness to somebody that cannot understand the gospel? Is that not about the saddest thing in the whole wide world? You make it so easy. You try to make the Romans road. You repay that thing just so there's no speed bumps. And they look at you. They don't even, they don't even say, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of see that. Or you get them right there, right there at it, man. You can really see God beginning to work in their mind. And all of a sudden, they begin to try to rationalize. And they begin to try to look at it from kind of, kind of a different angle. And you can see conviction fleeting away from them. And they just get it figured out. That really, you're just another religious outfit. And that's your little premeditated thought that you're giving them. And you're giving them the blessed word of God. 
I had, I, 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 I'm going to close with this. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, that's what I preach in Montana, by the way. I preach, I had to cut it down and move it around. But that's the way I preach. I, I, I love these people. You got to tell them the truth. Man, if I'm going to stand in heaven one day and there ain't going to be many behind me, at least they're going to be a bunch out in front of me and say, well, he told us the truth. Right. I mean, let me end with this. There was a, a family, I can't tell you their name, but they're a prominent family out where I live. They're ranchers. And they, they go to the Lutheran church. They're died, I'm talking about dipped, died and buttered Lutheran. And I was off doing something one day and they come, the, the, the wife come by my house and heard her, her and her boyfriend I, you know, when a man and a woman's together, I just always presume, you know, they're husband and wife. So you have to retrain yourself nowadays, don't you? Ain't that pitiful? She come by the house. Her husband had gotten drunk the night before, and he almost, uh, uh, not abused, but almost got rough with the child, leaving angry, mad, drunk. And she called the police. And, you know, she didn't go to the Lutheran preacher. I don't mean nothing to y'all, but boy, I tell you. Amen. It means the world to me. Didn't go to the Lutheran pastor. Didn't go to the church. Didn't go call the diocese to send somebody out from the synod. Right. She come to my house. And as soon as I got in, my wife said, you ain't going to believe who come by here. I said, oh, she said, uh, such and such and his wife, and they really won't talk to you sometime. I said, I've got one right now. Amen. And I got in my truck and I drove to their house. It's about five o'clock and I sit down in the living room and I watch that girl. Now they're both lost. And man, I told the gospel. I mean, I mean, I absolutely told. I said, man, I'm going there and they don't come to my church and they don't, I don't know if they really like me. So I'm just going to go and be absolutely point blank blunt. Tell them they're going straight to hell. And you know, I watched God move on that cowboy. But then I watched his wife and boy, I could have crawled. I almost told her to shut up, but I figured it wouldn't do good in her own house to tell her to shut up. But I watched her. So, oh, well, you know, I was baptized, and I know I'm going to heaven because I was baptized, and I, I just need you to talk to him. And I, I watched him do that, but you know what she told me while I was there? She said, we called you because we know at least you'll tell us the truth. Could have called anybody, but she said, I'll call you because I know at least you'll tell me the truth. Right. I believe we owe a world. I had another message I was going to try to preach, and I'm not going to double preach on you, but I had a message. We've got the absolute best truth there is going. We've got the best truth. We have a no-so. These things have been written that you may absolutely, unequivocally no-so. I'm not worried about when I get to heaven if the blood's not going to be enough for me. I'm not worried about if salvation's not going to be enough for me because I know so. I know so. I think about, you think about those billion people. God didn't call me to Islam, but you think about a billion people that think they know so enough to kill themselves when all they need to do is look to Christ who died for them. And I know so. I can't speak for you or nobody else. I think everybody in here is probably saved on a Sunday night, but I don't know that. But I know that I am. Right. And you can know it that just that real. Just, just that real, just out of that book right there, you can know so. Thank you. Amen. Thank, you Amen. Thank you. You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate Thank that, brother. God bless you.